Good morning, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Today we're with the cow mob, and uh, we just made a cattle drive into the eastern gammon grass field, and we put them in here overnight. And you can see they uh, we gave them a, a fairly good sized paddock last night because they were on it from basically four o'clock until eight o'clock this morning. And they did a really good job. We wanted to make sure that we gave them a big enough area that they didn't take the gamma grass down too short. And they didn't. Um, it looks really good. They harvested just the most palatable parts and left me a really nice solar collector here to grow back. And uh, this is October 7th, I'm sorry, August 7th. And so we still got one more grazing. Because on eastern gamma grass, it's recommended that you don't graze it 45 days before the last killing frost. So our killing frost is somewhere around October, October 15th in that neighborhood. And uh, so uh, Ike and Jackson moved this mob this morning while I was doing the bulls. And uh, we're using the creek. The creek is water because we finally got the rain and the creek has got some really nice holes of water. Matter of fact, uh, it's actually got a riffle flowing right now. So when you get, when we had five days, some of those days we only got a quarter inch, but that one day we got three inches and then another half inch and then the next day we got another inch. It just kept going, you know, and we love that. Here's where a cow actually got a hold of some gamma and pulled the uh, the rootstock. It's kind of like an iris bulb, but you know it, it spit that out. It wasn't gonna eat that. Yeah, I love the way this looks. This is awesome. Cows are just really stuck on that piece of grass there. So the boys uh, will be moving them again at noon. And uh, they gave them a smaller paddock this morning because it's only gonna last them four hours. And uh, this constant moving, we were always moving them twice a day, but uh, Isaac and the boys stepped it up to three times a day and our animal performance has really skyrocketed. Um, zero cases of pink eye. I can't believe that. I've never went a year where we didn't have at least one or two, but I wish I had some wood to knock on just <laughs> for the old timers. Don't, don't say something like that unless you have some wood to knock on because it may, may come out here tomorrow and have pink eye, but um, we're very thankful that we don't. And the Eastern Gamma, I'll get you up here closer, what they're chewing on this morning. The manure pats look just unbelievable. Just nice, nice manure pats. It tells you that they're getting a lot of energy through the cow. It's moist out here. I mean, even if we don't get a rain in 30 days, which it could happen in August, uh, this is gonna grow back. Because we captured so much rainwater. Yeah, so now it's, let's see, it's nine, it's not even nine o'clock. They're working it over. Mm. 
It's just something peaceful about watching cows eat grass. Especially multi-species grass. Eastern gamma, orchard grass, fescue, bluegrass. There's a little bit of water grass in here. Of course, the legumes are mixed in with it. It's just a pleasant sight. You can see, I mean, we, we really got a nice trample on this. And yet we left a, you know, a, probably over half of the plant is still intact. But it's hard to walk very far without finding manure. There, there's manure everywhere around here. Yeah, looking good. Got all the tree swallow boxes out here. They're working on the, the flies. The birds are. It's this time of year, you know, you, you wish you had more of it, the Eastern Gamma. But then here in another month and a half, you wish you, you had less of it because it, it doesn't make good winter feed. Um, we just don't have very, very good animal performance on it at all. But, yeah. It's a, it's a good warm season. It doesn't have any to toxins in it either. So they can eat the heck out of it. And you don't have to worry about getting any end of fight or anything into your cattle. Man, I mean, they've been nerd this up all over and laid it on the ground. See, a lot of this grass will spring back up. Some of it won't, and that's going to feed our soil. The boys are emptying out the last of the apple cider vinegar. That's what that trough over there's got in it. We had like, I don't know, 30... 30 gallons left and uh, we just never really saw any benefit of using it. the cows we, you know we were using it we were trying to get rid of our we had that one year was it a year ago that we were trying to get you know knock out the pink eye we were having a break out of pink eye we were trying everything and I never saw anything from the apple cider vinegar other than it's uh, it's a pretty pricey input. I don't even know what it costs now, but back then, you know, 250 gallon tote was a thousand dollars. I'm gonna guess you can't buy a 250 gallon tote today for a thousand. It may be, I don't know. I'm not gonna say what it is. But this is uh, the creek. Let's go and look at the water. We, we, we put a back fence in, so they can't come back to what they were on. Oh yeah, there's all kinds of water. The riffle is not running here. Yeah, it is a little bit, not much. But see, we're only gonna be on this for half a day. Not even that. This particular water point that they're on now is four hours. So, I don't like using creeks. For extended periods but if you can use them and bounce through them where you're not on them for a long period of time i will use them but that's a wrap folks i'm going to get out of here and uh, those of you all that are still uh looking for a really good grass genetic bowl we're going to have three of them our machos these are three-year-olds and they're gonna be on our website, greenpasturesfarm.net. So you're looking for a good bull, South Pole, to get your cow size down to that 1,000 pound, 1,100 pound range from those 
14 to 1600 pound cows uh, these bulls will do that for you anyway y'all have a good one and hit the subscribe button on the way out if you would i'd appreciate it have a good day